Potion. Okay, hello and welcome to Not the UK Column News. It's Thursday the 27th. Uh, well, actually, we're not allowed to say that. It's too television like. Too television. Too television like. Yeah. Uh, do you think we're allowed to discuss the weather, Brian? Uh, I think it could be risky. Perhaps we sh we can't comment on it because the television certainly does that. But maybe we can show people. Is well, that feel, feel free. Now, of course, we're not allowed to switch shots because that would be too television like. So, so this Brian's is by hand. Here we are. Pick the camera up and show you the weather. It is so wet and yucky and horrible. The sky is pretty grim, as you can see. That's grey sky. But I won't say any more because, um, well, Atvod may pick us up for being television like. Yes, okay, good, you even managed to, right, fantastic, okay. Well, I mean, there is one advantage to this, Brian. Uh, um, we we have shown the weather and uh, we're not in the studio, so it's actually cooler it is. Uh, in the yeah. car. Uh, and, uh, uh, well, uh, I'm not allowed really to ask you questions because that would be too television-like and uh, uh, might be considered a television interview. Yeah, um, can I just ask a question? Yes, I yeah, know oh, you're not allowed is... to ask questions, that would be an interview. Right. Okay, well, this is just a one-off. Oh, okay. I, I just wondered that, that, am I right in thinking that um, we've we've caused a problem? The, the BBC's got a budget of 3.65 billion, and then you can add on the extra bit of a, another billion for all of the, 1.2 billion for all of the commercialised stuff. But we've we, the UK column, have been so television-like that we've caused a problem. Yes. Seems like it. Okay. Uh, because Atvod's phones don't seem to be working today. No, I've heard that there's been a lot of calls going through to Atvod. Yeah. Um, and of course, the other thing that we've got to do is to reduce our production values because high production values are considered to be television-like. Right. So we have reduced our produ production values by coming into the car. Yeah. Yeah. And and this is not a studio. This is a car. And and uh, yes, there's no green screen here. There's actually a steering wheel. And a baby seat. Uh, and there is a child seat, although for some reason Lou's not sitting in it. Yeah. Right, so anyway, let's move on. Okay, uh, um, should, maybe we should discuss the chain of events which has led us to where we are. Yeah, because we're talking about this in with a bit of humour in a car, uh, because that's what we've had to do. But we're discussing some very, very serious stuff. This is the start of the UK government regulating the internet in order to shut up people who are telling the truth in a television-like way. In a television-like way, yeah. allegedly. Uh, now, Atvod originally contacted us in February, uh, and they claimed at that point that we were required to uh, advise them that we were running a video on demand service, whatever that means. Yeah. Um, so that's what they told us, and they asked us to fill in a form and send it back to them, um, which uh, which we didn't do because uh, we wanted to understand exactly what it was that we were filling in. Yeah. Am um, I am I allowed to look at you because it's a bit. Is this an interview? Well, or? I think if you were looking, I'll at, the look at the camera. Well, if you were looking okay. at the camera too much, that might be too television-like. But anyway, uh, I'll, I'll just generally look out the window. Following that initial uh, communication, um, I had a number of telephone conversations with Atvod, uh, and um, and this is really what they said to us. They said that the fact that the UK column is a not-for-profit association staffed by volunteers had no bearing on any determination that we make. So that they they really. We're, we're not saying that they were only uh, regulating corporate entities, but anybody really. So the scope is as broad as you like, from from a one-man band in their bedroom right up to the BBC. Yeah. Uh, the typical number of YouTube video views has no bearing on it whatsoever either. So I pointed out that, according to YouTube at least, uh, our daily video uh, broadcasts had, uh, video on demand videos had maybe between two and 3,000 views each day. Yeah. So we didn't exactly have a large market share here, um, and as far as Atford was concerned, that was irrelevant. So even the smallest producer is is uh, if they if they choose to produce a particular type of product, yeah, uh, is comes under their remit. So, well, it's really the truth that does the damage, isn't it, rather than the viewing figures. I would say so. Yeah. Um, so. Uh, and and uh, th then of course we come to this issue of the fact that the UK column is not providing video on demand content or was not providing video on demand content exclusively um, that uh, that they made clear or they seemed to make clear to me uh, was not going to save us from being required to register with them uh, and uh, indeed if you if you read the final determination that they make which is doing the rounds of the internet at the moment uh, they state that the that the only thing they were interested in was the YouTube channel 
Mm. Um, so they completely ignored the fact that UKcolumn.org exists. They completely ignored the fact that there is written that there are written articles on that website. They completely ignored the fact that we produce a quarterly newspaper. Um, and they have made a determination on the basis that that video on demand was our primary um, uh, action that we yeah. take. And of course, that has is not and has never been the case. Now, some people have said that uh, all it would have taken. Uh, was for us to write to Advod uh, and make a representation to Advod that in fact uh, our video on demand content uh, was not our primary pu purpose and all this would have just gone away. But that is not what I understood from the conversations that I had with Advod staff. Um, and uh, maybe, but perhaps that's just because I'm an idiot. I don't know. Well, I, I'm going to suggest, Mike, that may, maybe it's because Atvod doesn't know what uh, the rules are themselves. Okay. Right, Could, right, indeed. Atvod yeah. agreed. Absolutely, they agreed with me that they have no definition of what television like <coughs> is, um, and that uh, any decisions about what constitutes a television like program are completely arbitrary, uh, completely made off the cuff um, you, by you, a group of people. You're getting, me, you're getting me worried now because um, we're, we're here. This could be, even though we're in a car in the rain, this could be this television. This could be television-like, considered, yeah. Yeah, yeah okay. Uh, now, the next point was that they, the Advot agreed that there had been, up to this point, no court challenge to what defines television-like, and therefore no, uh, no <coughs> rulings by the courts. Uh, and, uh, um, and so they have not been challenged in what their arbitrary decisions actually entail. Um, Can I just add a bit there? Yeah, I think absolutely. might be help. Well, if if I just come in on this, I've got at VOD's uh, annual report 2012-13 in front of me. They're boasting about all the control work they're doing with pornography channels because at VOD says that a key role is to protect children from uh, online pornography. Um, surprisingly or not, three BBC appeals have all been upheld. And they go on to say here, the BBC Worldwide on Media Set Appeal was decided on the basis of information which had not been made available to ATVOD at the time of its determination. Each case involved complex issues and the appeals process plays an important part in clarifying both the scope of the regulations and the entity to which they apply in particular circumstances. Uh, is, is this my imagination, Mike, or does this really say they're making up the rules as they go along? Absolutely, that is my understanding of and what's going on, yes. The BBC is invited to sit into meetings with ATVOD, uh, so they help form the policy, and then, yeah. surprise, surprise, the BBC appeals are all upheld. Right. But ATVOD's independent. Right. So getting back to our story then, um, to cut a long story short, uh, with various further communications with ATVOD, uh, over the last, since February until the present. Uh, and at the end of the day, uh, they issued what they call an enforcement notice because we were simply refusing to engage with them in any meaningful way. Uh, and that, that gave us until yesterday to ask them very nicely if we would uh, if we would uh, be so kind as to, or if they would be so kind as to regulate us yeah. uh, and, uh, and regulate our activities. Um, now, since we're not gonna step into their world, um, we took the decision to take the videos down, so I just want to clarify that uh, Advod, Advod has not closed the YouTube channel. In order to avoid uh, regulation by Advod, mm. Advod, we have decided to stop um, acting as a video on demand service, which is what they claim that, that we are doing. Yep. Uh, and, uh, and we will then uh, take a breather and look at what uh, we might do in the future, but in the meantime we'll continue with the live stream. Uh, and uh, and certainly, I would imagine that that our other uh, the other people that that uh, we work with, like Ian Crane, may um, find other places to put their um, yeah. their programs. But of course, this potentially affects everybody who's producing material on the internet, because Appvod simply says we don't care how big or small you are, we're going to regulate you, and if you're putting material up in a television like way which they decide they define what that definition is yeah uh, so if anybody is out there starting to produce um, produce that's the key word if the materials produced in a television like way you are going to come under the control so here we have the British government starting directly to regulate the internet uh, in 2014 no um uh, something that was very interesting, I thought, in a, in a recent telephone conversation that, that a friend of ours had with uh, the chief executive of Advod, Peter Johnson, he admitted 
that their main um, sort mm. of motivation is to uh, regulate anybody perceived to be in competition with the mainstream media. Now, uh, I think that's a, a fairly fascinating uh, situation because what we have on uh, behind Atford is many uh, mainstream media bodies. Yeah. Um, and uh, and so it seems like we're in the situation where basically um, they are really there to stamp on anybody that, that makes sure that they never get big enough to, to actually challenge the BBC or Channel 4 yeah. or any of these other companies. So we, we should probably be flattered that um, the UK column has been selected to be an extremely television-like uh, broadcast. Yeah. Uh, at VOD statistics are that roughly 2% of the broadcasts are on demand, Yes. of which they're saying most of that on demand is actually provided by the BBC. Right. And uh, so we are a tiny fraction of what remains, but we're so dangerous because we're telling the truth that we're going to be regulated. Well, we're not. Right. Now, Atford's terms of reference um, state that there must be a majority of independent members on the determination panel. So the determination panel has a mixture of people that are considered independent and people that are from the industry yeah. for whatever reason, and they're considered non-independent. But independent, there must be an independent majority. But if we look at who is considered independent, and let's just take one example, we've got the deputy chair, um, Nigel Walmsley, who's supposed to be an independent board member. And he has a career spanning decades in the mainstream media, uh, including directorships, Carlton Television, ITV3 Limited, ITV Trust, Daybreak Television on Digital, Media Acquisition mm -hmm. Company, UBC Media Group, Select TV Cable, GNC Media Investments, just to name a few, there are a whole host more. And what's more, at least one current media directorship um, is not included on the ATFOD Register of Interests. So, I mean, this man is clearly not independent. And what? and actually, when we asked ATFOD, I mean, we spoke to ATFOD on a number of occasions about the Register of Interests, and they, they don't seem to care. Well, they absolutely don't care. And, of course, if you have a look at what they consider to be a Register of Interests, it's a few bullet points. It's not actually a comprehensive list of interests signed by the person concerned which is the way it's normally done uh, around the police boards or local authority boards so a very cavalier attitude to how they produce these things and when we pointed out there were errors there were omissions at vod simply not interested a lot of arrogance i think particularly from mr peter johnson the chief executive now the chairperson of uh, the authority for television on demand is a lady called ruth evans and this, this woman is really godlike in her uh, what she's capable of. So, so I just thought we would uh, just sort of go through her CV, which is amazing. Right. Currently, aside from being chair for the Authority of Television on Demand, she is non-executive uh, commissioner and chair of remuneration committee at the Independent Police Complaints Commission. Uh, she's also a director of Alacrity Entrepreneurship Foundation. Um, she's also a consultant at SHM Partnership. She's also a non-executive director and chair of remuneration committee at the National Audit Office. Um, she's also, uh, up until January 12, 12 then, she's uh, also been involved in uh, government administration industry. Uh, now, she's held a number of posts from 1999 to 2011. Um, she was non-executive director of Phone Pay Plus. She was member of Consumer Impact Panel Association of British Insurers. This is, this is all one lady. One yes. lady. Yes, she was a board member at right. ING Direct. She was chairman Bar Standards Board. She was a member of Queen's Council Selection Panel. She was deputy chair Ofcom Consumer Panel. She was a lay member General Medical Council. She was a chairman Gen uh, Standards Committee GMC. She was a member of the Audit Commission Independent Complaints Panel. She was a non-executive director of Nationwide Building Society. She was a member of Law Society Governance Review, Review Group. She was a chair independent inquiry into drug testing at work. She was a member of the Human Genetics Commission, non-executive director of Financial Ombudsman Service, non-executive director of Liverpool Victoria Group, chairman independent inquiry into paediatric cardiac services at Royal Brompton and Harefield Hospitals, member of Fabian Society's Commission on Taxation and Citizenship, member independent panel for future funding of the BBC, trustee the money advice trust she's also she's been independent she, yes yeah, yes bbc yes, yep, yes good uh, good chief executive national consumer council yeah. she's a chief executive uh, uh sorry board uh, director and national consumer council services limited which is, was a joint venture with De deloitte tush she's been chair of standing advisory group on consumers in the nhs she's been member of central 
Research and Development Committee of the NHS. She's been a member of the UK Roundtable on Sustainable Development. She's been a member of the Expert Panel on Sustainable Development. She's been a member of the NHS Charter Advisory Group. She's been a member of the DTI's Consumer First Award Scheme Panel. She's been a member of the DOH Advisory Board Acting on Complaints. She's been a board member, Prevention of Professional Abuse Network. She's been a member of the Committee of Management of UK Cochrane Centre. She's been a consulting. Uh, she's been a consultant at the Department of Health. She's been a cons- uh, chief executive at Warren Want. She's been a director, dire- deputy director, sorry, of Mind. Uh, she's been a director at Maternity Alliance, and uh, and she, in fact, she, her first job straight out of Cambridge University was at a director level. How do, yeah, how do Liberty. You do that? I think she started off Liberty was the first that, one. That that's not on her on the CV that I have, but nonetheless. Well, we've got that from other sources. Yeah. So um, straight into Liberty, and we know what Liberty was uh, connected with in the in the uh, past, which yes. of course was uh, the Paedophile Information Exchange and Paedophile Action for Liberty. Yeah. But um, so quite a woman, quite, independent, quite a woman. totally independent. Yeah, yes. good. Yes. Now, of course, Advod says that the regulatory burden is really low. They say that they're there to make sure children don't get access to harmful materials. Yeah. Uh, they say that they're there to prevent hate speech. Uh, and they say that, uh, in fact, if we were to be regulated by them, uh, we could take part in, in a discussions panel, in a panel of the regulated. Right. Yes. A panel of the regulated to make our points. Um, um, but of course, this. This so-called uh, light regulation is the thin end of the wedge. Um, Atford says that they gain their mandate um, from a uh, statutory instrument which amended the Communications Act 2003. Now that statutory instrument um, came about, it was made by the minister at the time uh, as a result of a European Commission directive which was designed to make sure that broadcast television companies did not put information, did not put programming on the internet which would not be suitable for broadcast networks. It was not intended at that time for um, for uh, s- censorship of the internet. Now I have this from um, from somebody who is an expert on these issues. Yeah. Um, so this is not me saying it. This is somebody else saying it. Um, and uh, Atvod is absolutely working beyond their authority at the moment, uh, and nobody is challenging them. Um, so that's what really this is about, isn't it? We we are we are warning people in uh, in a very upfront way that this is unbelievably dangerous. You have these completely unaccountable people. None of them, none of them are independent. They're absolutely linked into the mainstream broadcasting circuit. Uh, they are meeting behind closed doors with no minutes, no transparency for the public in order to make uh, judgments and uh, decisions on who they're going to regulate and they don't even know what their own rules are because as I just said I'll repeat it each case with the BBC appeal each case involved complex issues and the appeal process plays an important role in clarifying both the scope of the regulations and the entity to which they apply in particular circumstances so we can categorically state that ATVOD, by its own admission, does not know what uh, the scope of the regulations are they're trying to enforce. They do not know their own regulations and uh, they don't necessarily know what enti- entity it should apply to. But they are very big on porn. It has to be said that they're boasting that they've made some very big fines against porn channels. Well, well, if you look at the at the determinations they made over the last two or three years, it seems that they've spent most of their time watching uh, online pornography. Uh, but that, of course, is television, isn't it? Television-like programs, they, pornography, according to Apple. That's what they say. Right. Well, if I just uh, bring our... Oh, sorry, I was about to say viewers, but of course we're just here alone in a car. So here's a House of Lords uh, document. Just bring that in front of the camera. And uh, this was media convergence and its public policy impact. It was session 13, uh, 5th of February 2013, House of Lords. And um, uh, two key people were in front of the panel, Ruth Evans, uh, that lady with a long list of attributes, and Peter Johnson. And Ruth Evans said that Peter was the expert and that she was the generalist, and that was how we play it. And then it says they're looking after vulnerable people, 
and um, w Ruth Evans says that she's concerned about stuff that is legal but not permitted for children. But strangely enough, Peter Johnson was originally working with the British Board of Film Censors, uh, where he was uh, producing policy. And of course, what we've seen from censorship of films is that the pornography allowed has got worse and worse. And now it would appear that Mr. Johnson has simply hopped across to Atvod to regulate mm. it. Uh, he is paid somewhere between £100,000 a year and £102,000 a year. But don't worry about the money because basically Atvod can create their own money by saying that you, any of you on the end of that camera, are a television-like uh, program and they can come along and fine you. So if they need to pay themselves more money, they simply need more little people to fine. Mm. So what can we say? Can we speak especially to audiences in former Eastern European countries? who've known what massive government censorship is? Can we talk to our friends in Russia who will almost certainly know what massive government censorship is? Well, we can now tell you that as a result of ATVOD, uh, ATVOD has now declared its intent to start the full censorship of anybody who dares to get in front of a camera on the internet and produce... Uh, television like programs. So what do we want people to do? Well what we need people to do is it's time to stick together. Uh, this is very very serious it doesn't matter whether it's UK column or the people's voice or the community press group or uh, anybody else who is out there trying to uh, get the truth out over internet broadcasting. These people can come for all and any of us so this is the time that we need to make the world population aware that this lying, deceitful British government under Cameron at the moment, but formerly, of course, Blair and Gordon Brown. Uh, Tony Blair, remember, was the man who put his friends in place to start Ofcom. This is the point at which the British government has declared it is so frightened of the truth that it's going to censor the internet. We need millions of people to start phoning, speak to Atvod, speak to Ofcom, speak to your MPs, speak to people at the bus stop and start withdrawing your consent for what is blatant censorship by the British government. Now, of course, uh, whether, they could register. That's true. Whether or not uh, you uh, are producing programming, Lots of people have YouTube channels, even when they're not producing their own uh, programs. Now, of course, people may be in doubt about whether those YouTube channels actually are required to, to register with, with ATVOD. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, maybe maybe people should find out because... Uh, you know, well, I think we'd encourage people to inquire whether they should be registered under ATVOD because ATVOD has a duty to respond to queries, to tell people whether they should be regulating you or not. And uh, it will be interesting to see whether ATVOD is going to cope with maybe 10,000 people a week. Mm, mm. Um, so, but of course, we can't suggest that because that would be like a television announcement. Mm. So I think what we're really saying is a couple of blokes sat in a car, in a car park, in the rain. Um, this is what life in Britain is going to be like under censorship from King Cameron, unless we, the British people, stand up to be counted and do something about it. Now, uh, obviously, this conversation is going to end in a second because we're just going to get out of the car without saying goodbye or anything. Well, we can't. No, we, we can't, can't, can't have credits. Um, but uh, you know, on the live stream after after this this video, because it's not a program, yeah. it's it's a video. After this video goes out on the live stream, there's another very interesting video, and I just would like to encourage everybody to hang on. For, for a couple of minutes after after this uh, after this whatever it is yeah. uh, is shown and uh, and and please uh, please do watch the live stream and we just say if you've noticed that uh, Louise has disappeared I I think Atvod took her something happened and Some, she was there so one second and gone the next gone the next so it's obviously uh, not live television thanks for joining us bye bye well, you're not allowed to